Hi, I am ready for the upper two shapes that include that little top shape that I'll show you right now and the camera. And then I've already got the lettering in place, but I wanted to show you how to bend it in 3D, which is kind of fun actually. But you can see the camera over here to the left and there's the shape right there. I called it top one and there's three shapes involved in that. And I'm going to get right into it right now. So here is top one. You can see that I've drawn that. So I'll take the B key and I'll grab it and then I'll turn off the clicky copy. I think we don't really need to see that anymore and I'm just going to go like this which is to option delete and fill. Then I'll make sure that that layer has a one pixel Gaussian blur built into it which it is. Okay that's good. Now let me go to number two and if um, here's a little trick sometimes. Watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to click up to the clicky copy that's the uh, lighter version, which I don't need anymore, so I'm going to throw it away. Um, I'm going to click up to the clicky copy. I'm going to hit the M key for marquee, and I'm just going to make a marquee command J duplicate copy of the image. I'm hitting command J right now, and I'm going to take the V key and just move it down. I'll delete this in a minute, but I kind of want it here so I can see it. Rather than moving the whole entire other image in the way, I now can just paint on number two and look at how I can see what this is supposed to look like. Did you kind of follow what I did there? So click up to your clicky copy or your reference layer and make a marquee of what you want and just hit Command J and then you don't need the other shape. This is just to see it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually lighten up on the inside and I'll do the black in this case as an outside little um, layer. Okay, so I'm going to, there's a bunch of ways I could do that. But let me go back down to number two and make a selection of it. I've drawn it right there and you can see I've drawn the one side and I thought I drew the other side. Yes, okay, I actually did draw them. Um, let me turn this on and um, oh, I did make it. Oh, you know, I'm glad something happened here. Um, Photoshop has been doing something and I want to show you what I'm talking about. Look at how there are two, gosh am I glad it did this. Look at how there are two paths on this one path. Okay, I'm going to select it. Um, let me click away from it. I'm going to select it like this and hold the shift key and select it like that. Now you would think that there's only two paths there. You would think I could just command click it. Now why did that one disappear? I'll tell you why. Because when Photoshop recently when you hold command option and you drag away from something sometimes it makes copies underneath and I'll tell you when it does that. When I just take command option here I'm, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to delete that and it's going to still be there because there was two of them. I'm going to delete it again and now it's gone. Now watch this. I'm going to take command option and I'm just going to hold it down in the pen tool and I'm going to click. Now there should be another shape there. Okay it didn't. It's not making the mistake that it usually makes. But when you make a selection of something and one of the paths doesn't turn into a selection, there's probably one underneath it. All you have to do is hold command option and hit the delete key until you only have one left. Now when you make a selection, now they both make sure that they do the good job. Okay, they both turn into a selection. So I'm going to hit command H, grab the B key, and I'll make this go brighter um, not quite that bright. I'll go over here and grab that bright. Now let me um, turn off the clicky copy and we can now see what I'm going to do here. So I'm just going to brighten up on this and just run it on the bottom and run it on the bottom a little bit like that. And then if I want to I can just remove some of that opacity. In fact let me go back to this color and just kind of kill it back just like this. Now that's going to be fine actually. Okay. That's going to be fine. Um, I probably can, um, even though you're going to say, well, don't paint another color on another layer, um, I probably can just run the brush just a little bit like this because it didn't take long, and then run the brush a little bit like this because it didn't take long. Now, let me go up to number three. I've actually made a moved selection. Do you see it right there? Okay, the same thing just occurred. Dog on it. I'm going to click here and there's two of them here. So if I hit the P key, hold command option or control alt and click on it, I'm going to delete it and there's another one there. Now let's delete it again. Okay, there was only two of them there. So let's command click it now. Now, this is what I'm going to do. 
I'm going to make a selection of number two and subtract number three from it. So I'll click on what I'm subtracting. So do you, do you understand? We're going to subtract the big shape from the little shape, get that shape. Now let me hit Command H to hide it. Let's take the B key, make sure we're painting on number three. Let's grab the black value and let's paint the black value. I'll just paint it. Now, there is a pretty good rendition of what that is. And now that little bit of tone that I put on here really does work. It really does make it look nice. Now let's go to the camera number one layer and I'll grab a light value and I have a little ellipse that I created for camera number one. See it? It's right there. Let me hit Command H and I'm just going to paint this. Um, grab a little light tone. Okay, good. And now let me make sure I know where it is. Okay, let's zoom in. And let's paint that just a little bit. Now I'll make it brighter than I need. Gaussian blur it, right? I'll Gaussian blur these two. And then I can lower the opacity. So let me click to camera two. Now, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm actually gonna deselect and I'm gonna add a layer mask. I actually had a camera two layer ready to paint on, but I don't need it. I'll tell you why. Don't need it. I'm gonna actually take away some paint on the layer mask, but I made a path for it, it's right there. See it? Now let me hit Command H and zoom in. Let me hit Command H to hide it. Now if I paint black on the layer mask, do you see how it's eliminating the paint right there? Which is great. I mean that's what I wanted. I'll make it a little bit darker on the bottom or I'll remove more paint on the bottom. Now let me deselect. Let's click on this image layer and hit Command F. Let's click on this top layer here and hit Command F. And then let's click on this layer and hit Command F. Now let's save the file. Now I'm gonna throw away that little tiny layer number three because I don't need that. And I'll save the file again. Now I've done something to bend the, uh, I wanna bring something over. See how that lettering is bent in position? Well, I just took a regular text tool and I typed on here and I'll go up to that layer. It's text. Now I actually painted, I turned on the clicky copy just so you can see and I'll zoom into this. I actually used ellipses and a little bit of pathing and I pathed that out and I called it circle shapes. So do you see how if I um, turn down the clicky copy in the reference, see how I'm turning it way down? Here is my little shapes that I made here, okay? Not a big deal, but they're already bent in perspective. So this is what I wanna do. I wanna bend these in perspective all at one time. So I am going to click on this layer, which is that layer. I'm gonna click on Command click or Control click on all of these layers and hit Command T. Now, if I hold the Command key down, it turns into a reshape tool. See how I can just lay this right down on that surface right there, okay? And look at how nicely that just laid right down on that surface. Now, let me Z back because I'm gonna to have to move these things out. Let me Z back and go back. So, um, let me click, bend this down on that surface and stretch it out a little bit. Then I'll stretch it out a little bit more this way and this way. Now, I'm gonna move it up. Then I'm gonna turn it just ever so slightly until that's in the right perspective, okay? Now, let me hit the return key and let's click to this layer and to the battery layer and I'm gonna take the V key and move those into position right there. Now let's click to the 1241 here and move that, whoops, wrong 1241, Brian. Let's right hand click in the move tool and go to that layer and move this into position. Now, let me make sure that I'm on the right um, path. That should actually probably be moved down just a little bit. And that's pretty good. Now, if I have the perspective wrong, I'll know it. Now, let me turn off the clicky copy let me save the file and let's go get our other layers. So I'm going to minimize that other thing. I'm bringing something over. Do you see the shine that's on this too here? Well, I'm gonna put a shine on it in a few minutes. But here is my, I'll do both of them. I'll take this reflection image, which I'm opening now. Just give me a second, give me a second. It's gonna be right there. And I'm gonna take this reflection image 
and open it in Photoshop. Now I'm going to right hand click and duplicate that layer to my hard object. Then I'm going to close it. Then I'm going to go to this one and duplicate, whoops, duplicate that layer to my hard object. And I'll have a choice. Now I'll close that. Now I want to take them all the way down to here. Um, I should have, um, I'm a very bad boy. Let me put them one above this and then I need to actually make a layer folder for these. So I'm going to click a layer folder here and let me say this is going to be center buttons on the top. Did I spell all that correct? Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. <laughs> let's click and let's shift click and let's put the buttons in there. I'm trying to stay organized as best as possible. Command S to save the file. Now, something very neat. We can bend these things in perspective. Let's do the first one. If I take the first one and I bend it in perspective, that'll be great. Okay, I'll be happy with that. But look what happens when I clip it and I wanna show you what I'm gonna clip it to. Do you see that layer that's right here? the layer that I'm clicking on. Well, that's, I don't want the picture to show up beyond that. So let me deselect. Now pay attention to what I said. We kind of went over this in another lesson. I am going to turn it on and I'm going to clip it to that layer. Now, what happened is, um, oh, I have to turn it on. I had to turn it on. Okay. The layer wasn't on and I turned it off, but I am going to take the command T key. And I'm going to do the same thing I did a minute ago. I'm going to bend the MACA in position just like this. Now I'm going to skew it. So I skew it up in position. Do you see how I'm making it be in the same perspective that I need it to be? Now let me make it smaller. Move it in position underneath. Let me make it a little bit bigger here. So it flows in the right position, in the right, I need to make it deeper and a little bigger. So I'm gonna hold the shift key. Okay, so the bottom is in position. The top is now in perspective. The left-hand side, look, 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 look. The left hand side is now coming into perspective nicely and the bottom, I'm holding the command or control key in the transform tool. I'll move this into position a little bit more. I don't want to crop off the edges. Okay, that looks good. Now I'll hit the return key and I now have that one bent in position. Now let's do the same thing to the Mars. So I hold the option or alt key and I clip it. I now hit command T on it. Would help if I selected it. I hit command T on it. All right, now obviously I'm gonna bend it in position, but I don't wanna make it the same width because it, um, it's not gonna work out exactly right, okay? It's, um, it's, I'm not gonna thin it down. I'm just gonna crop a part of it. So let me grab this. Let's move this into position. Now let's move this to be parallel to that side. Look at how cool. Let's put this to be parallel to that side. And then this to be into this one a little bit more. I'll thin it down just a little bit. Look at how neat I'm making this. Let's go down just a little bit more and a little bit more to be at parallel here. Now there is my Land Rover. Um, I want this horizontal, if I said that correctly, to be kind of good in here. So I'm gonna kind of cheat. I'm cheating, I'm cheating. I want it to go up a little higher and then down a little farther there. That feels better to me than it did a minute ago. Now I can move it over or back and I don't want the, the part of that to get in the way of the um, 1241. So I'm gonna move it down just a little bit, right about there. And I'm good with that. So I'll take this now, I'll turn it off. I'll turn this back on. Now I'm gonna put a layer above the two of those right there. And I'm also gonna clip it 
to that layer. What's it going to be? All the way on the bottom, I made a shine. See it right there? And I'm going to show you again what the shine looked like on the iPhone right here. If, was that the iPhone that I had? No, it was... Okay, I have to find it. I don't know where it went. Oh, it's over here. It's over here somewhere. Learn to draw an iPhone. Let me see. Yes, this one. See how the shine goes from the center to the left? I couldn't find my shine. So what I'm going to do is click back on here. With a selection active, I'm just going to hit the B key, grab the white, and I'm just going to flood it with white. Boom. Okay, look. Neat, right? Deselect. Add a what to it? You got it. A layer mask. Now, let's take the B key, make it bigger, paint at 4 or 5 or 6 percent, and let's minimize it as, whoops, I need to click onto the layer mask, Mr. Soriel, and paint black on it, and look at how I can actually now come in and just take it like this, let's get close on it, and let's have it now be transparent, and let's take it and minimize the opacity of the layer, and that should actually make a very nice, look at what I'm doing, very nice reflection, but I want to get just a pinch whiter on the edge. What does that mean? I make a new layer. Now, and I clip it to the same thing. Now, this is going to be highlight number two, but it's at 100%. And I'm simply going to show you in Command H, whoops, I don't have it selected. I'm going to reselect it and hit Command H. I'm now going to get close to it, and I'm going to hit that just a little bit harder right on the edge, just right up here. Okay, and now I have my highlight done very nicely. I'm going to click over to here and deselect, and I'm going to eliminate the highlight as it moves its way to the bottom. So I kind of want to just kill the highlight right there. And now, I have a nice phone with a nice highlight. I could even put another highlight along this edge if I wanted to. I'll click over here, I'll grab the white, and I'll just take this and I'll just come into the bottom here and I'll just hit that edge just a little bit harder. And now I have just a little bit of a highlight right on that edge. And there's your phone and I think it's a pretty nice phone. Now, let me close everything. Here's closing the text layer. Let me put the text layer now right here above everything. Let me close the button layer. And now with the reference all done, all I have to do is click on this layer and put in a background. So now let's take and make um, kind of a light colored background. And I want to do a shadow with it too, so I'll need a shadow layer. And I'm almost done. So let's go to shadow. I want this to be kind of airy, but I still want it to lay on the ground. So I'm going to go backwards here or zoom out. Let's go to a warm value somewhere in there. Just a warm value. I'm not quite sure what I want to do with it yet. Let's just go to a really light warm value. Okay, let me see what this looks like. It's probably going to look awful at first, but I don't care. Let's just come in here like this, and let's just put in a warm value. Okay, I'm just going to have some fun with color. Let's go here and grab a gray like this, and let's put in this warm foreground. And then I'll flood this in here like this just to give it some ambiance, some value with a little bit of warmth in the background. Okay, that's good. Now let me flood this in here. And then I'm gonna take a little bit on a little bit of a higher layer. Let's grab a lighter, very pale blue, very pale blue. And let's come in here with a pale blue on the foreground. There, that feels really pretty. That feels really pretty. And I really don't want much more in there. I just wanted that. Now let's go to the shadow layer. Let's use the shadow from the very big part of the phone right there. Now watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go grab a darker value of the shadow. 
If it doesn't look good, I'll change it, okay? And I'm gonna hit Option Delete. Now, let me um, deselect, hit Command T to transform, move the shadow down like this, take it, click with the Command key and size it down like this so it lays right on the ground, off the item like this, and back a ways. So let's, um, let's transform it, let's transform it, let's transform it and get it to go a little bit more like this. There, now let's gauge and blur it. So we take it like this and we gauge and blur that shadow about that much. Now, I want the shadow to get a little tighter in the front of the shadow, okay? I don't mind that it's actually diffused itself back here, but right in the front, it should get a little tighter. So I'm gonna take the path, which I should have done, and put the path in position. This isn't gonna make a whole lot of sense right now, but I'm gonna take the path, which is now all the way to the bottom. I'm gonna hit the P key, and I'm gonna have the path line up. So now I hit Command T, and guess what? I'm transforming the path. So let's take the path here. Let's take the path here. What I should have done, and I'm gonna probably still do it, is um, now that I know that I like that shadow, I'm going to um, get rid of it, and I'm gonna paint it again, okay? Because now this matches up to the, to the shadow. I have to um, retransform this a little bit more. That has to match up to the bottom line, and this has to match up to the bottom line. And now let's take this and bring it down like that. Okay, that's good. Now I'm gonna throw away that shadow. Actually, I don't have to throw it away. Okay, this is what I have to do. Command A to select all, click on the shadow layer, and just delete it off, okay? So I have to do it again. Command A to select all, Mr. Shorio. Click on the shadow layer and hit the delete. Okay, why isn't that deleting? Lock, 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 lock. Okay, so I turn it off. This isn't like brain surgery. Click, click, hit the V key, and hit the delete key. Okay. What am I doing wrong? Oh, I'm in. Oh, I still had it. No, I have a selection active. Let me deselect and save the file so it doesn't quit. Sometimes this is what Photoshop does, and I might be locked into something I'm not quite sure about. I'm not on any path, as you can see. There's no path selected. So, um, I should click to the layer, click away, click back, hit Command A to select all and delete the shadow off. That should have deleted off before, okay? Not a big deal. Let me go back to the, um, I got rid of my path. That's what I did. So I have to go back until the path is there. So let me, that's what the problem was. So let me Z back, Z back once. And let me see if my path is there. Let me Z back again. Let me Z back again. There's my iPhone copy. Z back one more time. Z back one more. Got it. Boy, was that a pain. Okay, the problem was I was deleting with a path selected. You understand what I just said? So I had to Z back to get it back because I did not feel like doing it again. Let me hit Command T though and I want to move this over. Okay, now. I'll, now I'll do it correct. Command click to turn off the darn path. With Command A selected, click on the shadow layer and hit the delete key. That was my fault, but you know what? It's the way it goes. Command click the shadow. I'm just gonna take an option delete and fill the shadow again. Then I'm gonna gauge and blur it again. Hopefully the blur is still on the big part. Yes, it is. Now I'm gonna add a layer mask to this. And remember I said gauge and blur to the most of it, layer mask to the least of it. I'm gonna zoom in. I'm gonna make a selection of that shadow again, and I'm gonna inverse it. Shift Command I or Control Shift I, and I'm going to hit Command H. Now, if I hit the B key, I can actually tighten up on the front of the shadow and look at how that looks even better now that it's going a little bit harder in the front and softer back there. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to enhance the darkness of the shadow. So I'm gonna make a selection of it again, click to the image, and I wanna darken the front of it a little bit, okay? But I'm gonna add a slight feather to the shadow of about four or five pixels. Now, let me hit Command H. Let's grab this tone again, but make it slightly darker. I'm almost done, and then you gotta go do yours. So let's go click, 
little bit darker. Actually, I should make it on a layer higher and make it darker. It's a little bit darker in the front. Oh, that looks so nice. Okay, now the shadow diffuses itself until it goes out there. And I think what I'm gonna do is deselect and Gaussian blur this one a little bit more. So let's go filter, blur. I don't want it to Gaussian blur a whole bunch. So now I don't want it to go 70 pixels. Let's just do it about five or six pixels, maybe even more than that. There, beautiful. And there's your illustration. And I think that looks really pretty. Now let's go see what um, let's go see what picture looked better in there. Was it this picture or this picture? Maybe it was actually that picture. That looks kind of neat. I really like that. But you see how you have all the freedom in the world to do any picture that you actually want to do? And I think that's pretty cool. Did I make a mistake on this phone? I don't know if I did or didn't. Let me turn up the opacity to see if I did. You know, I think that this picture should be cut off right here. So I did make a mistake. So all I basically have to do is add a layer mask to these two images here and here. Do you see what I'm saying? So I'll do that. Um, with you right here, I'm going to click very quickly and click very quickly across here. Then I'm going to click up higher, up higher, and down lower. And now on that path, I'm going to make it a path. I'm going to select it. Nope. I'm going to add the layer mask first to this one. I want you to see what I'm going to do. I'm going to add the layer mask to this one. And now I'm going to delete out part of the image. Okay, and let's just see. No, I don't have to. Maybe I designed a whole new iPhone on me. So let's command click it. Turn off the clicky copy. Okay, now all I have to do is get rid of this by painting black on the layer mask, which is a option delete, and black on the layer mask, option delete, and now here is the top of the phone the way it should be. Here's the top of the phone. Oh, I actually like that better. That looks really pretty. Command S to save the file. Now you're going to have this one in your, um, that should be toned back. You're going to have this one in your asset folder. So if you want to open up mine, you go right ahead and open up mine. But there is mine. Command S to save. And we are good to go. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, put your background in there. Paint your phone. Watch my movies a couple of times. I've painted the entire thing in front of you. And I think it turned out pretty darn well. And I'm sorry it took so long. But you know what? This would go for somewhere between 500 and 1200 if you were making this in one day. That would be a normal cost for painting this phone. I would tend more toward the 1000 to 1200 range on this phone. And if I could do that every day of the week, I'd be very, very happy. So good luck and see you soon.